XX Will Travel has partnered with Studio Headphones to offer our listeners a 15% discount off of any Studio product. Just use the code WILLTRAVEL. Hello, and welcome to XX Will Travel. I'm Inez Bellina. And I'm Kathy Polkerbeck. And today we're actually going to talk about one of Kathy's recent trips. Where did you go, Kathy? Oh, where didn't I go? That's yeah. the question. <laughs> so I took a little European vacation, and I went to Barcelona, to the south of France, to Perpignan, Took the train up through Belgium and ended up in Amsterdam. Awesome. And all those places are amazing, but you spend a significant amount of time in Belgium, so that's what we're going to focus on in these minutes. So give us a bit of a rundown of your trip in Belgium. Okay. But, yeah. No. <laughs> Over. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. So, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So I actually flew from Perpignan, France, to Brussels. Mm -hmm. And you know, Belgium is a small country. So from Brussels, I took a bus about an hour away to the town of Ghent. Mm -hmm. And that is where I based myself for most of the time. Because uh, Belgium, the size, is really advantageous because everything is like an hour away. Yeah. Antwerp, Bruges, uh, Brussels... You can get there so easily, so quickly, so cheaply on the train. It was amazing. Two-part question. One, what made you want to visit Belgium? And then why did you decide to base yourself off Ghent? The reason that I was going to Europe is because I was meeting with a bunch of friends and we were going to go see another friend who lived in the south of France. And I also have friends who've lived in Amsterdam for a year. So I decided to fly into Barcelona, which is where we departed for the south of France, and then to fly out of Amsterdam. And I had to find a way to fill the time in between because it was a two-week trip, which was so hard. Like, talk about delicious choices. <laughs> do I go to Germany? Do I go to Switzerland? Do I hang out in France and go to Lyon? Do I spend more time in the Netherlands? So it was one of my favorite choices I've ever had to make. Mm -hmm. And I just decided since Belgium is is directly north and it's in between the Netherlands and France that that would be logistically the most sense. Right. And then Ghent came about how? I don't know how, yeah. actually. I think I posted a bunch of questions on some travel forums and everybody talked about how Bruges was so touristy. I had been warned before I left. I actually went in the beginning of March, mm -hmm. so people have been like, okay, that's a good time to go to Bruges because no one's out of school yet, and the tourists will have not yet descended. And so I heard that Ghent was far less touristy than Bruges, and that is why I chose to base myself out of Ghent. Yeah. So what's it like? I mean, what are some of the highlights? Of Ghent? Yeah, because I've never really heard of it, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's the thing about Belgium is I before I left... Several people have were like, Belgium? Mm -hmm. Or someone would be like, I went to Brussels for a day, and that was about it. And yeah. that's all you'll need. And I'm like, are you serious? It's a whole country. Like, come <laughs> on. So I kind of was worry, or sorry, worry is how we are towards North, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of wary yeah. of going to Belgium in general, but I'm the kind of person who likes to check things out for myself before I make a decision. So, Ghent is actually a university city. It is a medieval city, and it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's very old. There are a lot of castles and museums, and it's its in the Flemish part of Belgium. Okay. So, it is in the western part of Belgium, so they all speak Dutch there, and it's just charming. Yeah. Like, I've heard also that Leuven is charming, which is an even smaller city than Ghent. But I kind of think in terms of Belgian cities, the smaller the city, the greater the charm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's walkable. There are train stations if you need to connect to any place else in Belgium or in Europe. Um, I found the people to be just goofy and lovely. And yeah, that yeah. Is, that's... My impression of Ghent. Yeah. <laughs> Were there things to see there, or was it more just a place to go to sleep? 
Ghent was, I will say, unless you really are into Belgium, Ghent is a day trip. Like, okay. you can spend a, a day in, in Ghent. There is pretty decent food. I stayed in a monastery. It's an Airbnb. It's a restored monastery that is... Two artists are renovating it, and they live there with their daughter. They've had it for about 20 years, and they have one Airbnb Airbnb room that they rent out. And they were just a font of knowledge. And I walked in, and they were all eating dinner. And you could tell that they just really enjoyed each other's company. Like, the daughters are teenagers, and as soon as they asked me to sit down with them, and I did. And when I sat down, they were like, all right, girls, it's time to get out the map and practice your English. (laughs) So it was me and these two girls talking, and um, I had to ask some questions like, where's the best ice cream? And they're like, oh, the best ice cream. And they would, like, go through all the stores and the flavors and, like, show me on the map. So I had a really good team of advisors at hand. Um, So that was really fun. There are tons of churches, like, all over Belgium. Just you're so churched out after spending (laughs) a couple of days, unless you're into that sort of thing. There's a castle. Mm -hmm. Lots of pretty picturesque bridges. There is a belfry, so you can climb to the top of the stairs, and you can see, get a view of the whole, whole city. So I actually went on a really great free walking tour that leaves from Hostel Uppelink, and it got um, it got me like really. I knew where everything was in the city. So basically, if you take a three hour walk yeah. <laughs> around Ghent, you will know where everything is. Um, another thing about Ghent is that every time a baby is born, there are streetlights. That flash in the town center. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is the cutest, cutest city yeah. ever. Like, everything I can- encountered was adorable. So if you're on St. Virplin Square and you see lights, the street lights suddenly flash, it's because the baby was born. Aww. Mm-hmm. And they just, like, welcome him into the community. <laughs> exactly. Or her. Yeah. Exactly. That's so, awesome. So that is what I know about Ghent. There's also a lot of crazy medieval stuff that that went on because in Flanders there was a king named Maximilian and nobody liked Maximilian the king <laughs> and the king did not like them so that's more that's that'll that'll come up again more in in Bruges but yeah. one thing I did learn in Ghent the Belgians seemed to be were very into torture Oh, and if you go in the castle in in Ghent, there is a museum yeah. dedicated to instruments of torture, <laughs> and they look, they look really torturous. Like I saw a rack where they stretch people, and I saw they used to think that epilepsy was not a disease, but was like um like a just. You know, like a demon, kind of, yeah. but just you know, that made someone deficient. So I saw the tools they used for people with epilepsy. It was scary, and I know from like studying African colonization that the Belgians were also known as the cruelest colonizers. Yeah, so they were the people who left Rwanda and kind of made the difference between the Hutus and the Tutsis. So distinct that like they created the conditions for war right basically and now they're so peaceful (laughs) and now i'm like belgium is adorable so it kind of makes me wonder like what happened like did they just get it all out of their system i think so (laughs) i think so they must and belgium is famous for linen and cloth like that was how they made their fortune back in the medieval times was through the cloth trade so you'll see a lot of nods to that too nice yes in your Instagram post, which I found to be super delightful, you described Bruges as the look at me middle child. Now you're a middle child, mm-hmm. and I'm a middle child, and I want to know what do you mean by that? <laughs> so, what do I mean? I mean that I went to Brussels, and Brussels is very sleek and sophisticated. The, you know, the EU is headquartered there, so like they ha- it's very cosmopolitan and multicultural. And then you have Ghent, which you can see everything in Ghent in three hours, and it's adorable. It is so cute that you just want to pinch its cheeks. <laughs> and then, and, and Ghent sort of like takes its history in stride. Like, it's like, here's a castle you can walk around in, and there's some information. Right. Whereas, like, if you go to Bruges, I'll sum it up like this. So there's there's a place in Bruges 
and it's like an interactive museum where you can interact with people from from the medieval period and at the beginning like i didn't know you had to pay for it so i walked up and there's this like animatronic man (laughs) in many languages going come see how medieval people lived (laughs) instead of get which is like so chill like hey just imagine it it's like no we're gonna put this weird scary animatronic man in your face (laughs) to get you to go to this museum right and i feel like it's just it's flashier yeah and um, it's more in your face, and they're like, oh, so the, the village hall in Ghent is this big? Well, ours is four times the size oh. kind of thing. And I just feel like it needlessly, because people go to Bruges. Like, Bruges is so touristy, and it needlessly promotes itself and puts on shows for people. <laughs> It never got the love it needed from its parents. No. Yeah. It was, and, and Maximilian hated Bruges. Like, yeah. every city in Belgium has, like, the, you know, an official beer. So the beer in Bruges is called uh, Bruges Zot, which means Bruges, Bruges Fools, because the people of Bruges wanted to raise funds for a mental institution mm-hmm. to in which to put their people who probably shouldn't be wandering on the streets. Mm-hmm. And they, they tried to wine and dine King Maximilian to get him to fund this mental institution. And at the end of the night, after they had all had this wonderful party, King Maximilian turns to them and says, Oh, you don't need a mental institution. You just need to close the town town gates because you're all fools. Oh, burn! <laughs> Maximilian! Maximilian! Well... So, you know, I feel like there's a lot of flash and pomp and, like, you know, trying to draw attention to itself. When all, you know, if Maximilian had maybe loved the Bruges people a little more, it wouldn't be that way. Have you ever seen the movie In Bruges? No, but I have seen Colin Farrell. I've seen the window where Colin Farrell jumps into a canal. (laughs) And I was like, this means nothing to me. Well, it's probably one of my favorite uh, comedies. But the interesting thing about it, right, it's like Colin Farrell and this other dude whose name I can't remember. In any case, they go off to Bruges kind of as an escape. And the British part of the duo, like not Colin Farrell, the other guy, it's just super, like, at peace with it. You know, he fi- he feels it's heaven. Well, Colin Farrell really does think that Bruges is hell. And just seeing, like, that dichotomy <laughs> between both instances just makes it for a really, really funny depiction of a city. Did you like it? Did I like Bruges? Yeah. I didn't like Bruges as much as I liked Ghent. Okay. But I think Bruges... I think I really like, I don't know, maybe it's Gallo's humor because of all the torture and stuff that came out, but I felt like Bruges had a really good sense of humor. Like, there was just a bunch of silly things. Like, for example, there's a a chocolate, uh, there's a chocolate store where we went and bought a bunch of, they call them pralines, but it's not like a New Orleans praline. It's like um, a filled chocolate, and that's what they're famous for. And we go outside, and in the window are all these, like, sexy chocolates in all shades like white black brown of like boobs and penises and there was an ejaculating penis and it was like your choice veiny or not veiny and we were just like a city like this that puts that in the front window has to have a sense of humor yeah about itself and i was gonna post it on instagram but i was like man i don't want to get us kicked off of instagram (laughs) yeah (laughs) who knows how they will take it exactly (laughs) Yeah, uh, what were some of your highlights, uh, some of the Bruges highlights? Some of the Bruges highlights. There is a Salvador Dali museum. Oh. Because it was raining. The thing about Belgium, they say about sunny days are only about 30% of the year. Oh, my God. And I had two of them. So in Bruges, it rained all day. So I was ducking in and out of places just to kind of keep shelter. And I ran into a random Salvador Dali museum which was very interesting. The chocolate in Bruges is really good, and they actually have a guild of chocolate chocolatiers. Oh. And that means a lot of the bigger chains will import chocolate from France or Switzerland, so it's not really Belgian chocolate. But if they have a sign on their storefront that says they're a member of the guild, then uh, you know the chocolate is Belgian. Yeah. So that was really good. What else is a highlight of Bruges? The swans. Mm. There are swans everywhere because, again, King Maximilian, he was held by the citizens of Bruges 
Oh, he attacks them, and he had banned all their festivals because he hated Bruges. <laughs> And so they were... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got a kick out of this, like, king who just has a vendetta against one city. Again, and not even, like, a governor of a city, like, the entire city. And they were, they were really excited because he, Maximilian was accidentally born in Belgium. I th- believe he's German. Mm-hmm. But he was accidentally born in Belgium, and the Belgians were like, hey, he's going to think of this as his homeland. He's going to treat us really well. And that did, that was yeah. not the case. So they held him captive until he decided to tax them less. Oh, and he used them to fund wars because they were very wealthy mm-hmm. because of the, the textile trade. And so they're waiting for him to rescind these orders, and they're like, all right, you're not going to to do this? Then we are going to imprison your best friend. Charlie Longneck. Um, What's his name, Charlie? Anyway, his last name was Longneck. And so he was like, I don't care. Like, we're buds. We'll just sit here and have a good time. (laughs) So then they were like, all right, well, if that is the case, then we are going to kill him in front of you. (laughs) And so this um, rightfully scarred King Maximilian. So when he was finally released... He decided to flood their canals with swans <laughs> because swans have and ma- and make them pay for the upkeep because swans have long necks and would forever remind them what they did to Peter yeah. Longneck. That is like a symbolic shade. Like <laughs> totally like he thought this through. Like yeah. he's in there, he's in prison and he's like what? Snakes? No. no. Puppies? No. Swans. Yes. <laughs> And I guess, and that's where the swans come from? Yeah. Yeah. And they still have the swans, and they're just wandering around. Um, There's also, near the swans, um, a cloister where these nuns used to live. And the nuns, the nuns were kind of dying out. And now, and it's the most peaceful place ever. You just walk through it. It used to totally be, they were totally self-sufficient. Like, they have markets. And they made their own bread, so they didn't really need anything. And then as they slowly died out, all these these houses where they lived emptied out. And now the order rents them out to people. Oh. So you can stay in this peaceful cloister. But the only catch is the gates shut at 6. Oh. So. Okay. <laughs> I guess you have to stay out all night and come back the next morning. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you miss your curfew. Yeah. But or- it, it looked like a super peaceful place to stay. Very green and lush. and Good place like, for a retreat, maybe. For sure. You know, if you really want to focus on something. Brussels, which is kind of the sleek, sophisticated sister of mm-hmm. Bruges. Uh, I noticed that you went to a lot of museums there, or just in general, I guess, in Belgium, but it seemed like you hit several of them in Brussels. I did, because it was cold. Yeah. (laughs) And I should have stayed in Spain, where it was 70 degrees, and there was a beach, but (laughs) I soldiered on, so it it actually snowed when I was in Brussels. Oh, wow. So walking around wasn't super pleasant, but it was still, you know, the thrill of being in a new place. Yeah. So my favorite museum was the Magritte Museum, because I'm a huge fan of the artist Magritte. The The best part, not only seeing his work and how it, he, how it evolved over his lifetime, was the fact that there were tons of school children there mm-hmm. in the museum. And they this was the French part of the country, which was another difference between um, the, the Flemish part, was that I noticed... It was weird because we don't think of, of French speakers as being super friendly, but when I was in the Flemish part, everybody would speak to me in Dutch first, mm-hmm. and then I'd be like, oh, I don't speak Dutch, and they'd be like, okay, and they'd yeah. speak to me in English, even though everybody speaks perfect English. <laughs> but when I was in uh, the French-speaking part, everybody spoke to me in English first, Yeah, and it seemed like they were friendlier. Like, I don't know if that's because, I don't know if that's because they're more used to an international crowd with the EU right. or what, but... Maybe trying to separate themselves from the French. <laughs> Just kidding. I love the French. <laughs> no. <Nah>. But, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so these kids were on a field trip, and I was listening to their lecture, and every time the guide would ask a question and a kid got it right, the kid got to wear a Magritte hat. Oh. He got to wear the bowler, which was amazing. I also went to Bozar, which is like a more contemporary museum. And I saw still lifes by 
Goya and Picasso and various other men. <laughs> um, but my favorite museum, and I don't know, even if you are not into museums, like this is a fun place to go, was the Musical Instrument Museum. Ooh. So the Musical Instrument Museum has instruments from all over the world, from flutes made of thigh bones to hurdy gurdies to bagpipes of all shape and size and if you buy the audio tour you stand in front of an instrument and you're like oh i wonder how this accordion sounds and you find the corresponding number and you get to listen oh cool to that accordion being played and then you're like oh but this slightly different accordion <laughs> in a cabinet of 60 accordions <laughs> how does that sound and you i could spend days there yeah like it is amazing like it's just so cool to see like well i don't even know how you play that much less it how it sounds and to to hear it and in real life, that was really fun. Yeah. I, it made me sad that I had such a limited time there. Which museum was the creepiest? I didn't I didn't really have a creepy museum. <laughs> no? No. Why do I feel like you posted a, a painting of a creepy thing? That was a creepy still life. Ah. Where, yeah. where was that? At, the, at Bozar. At the Bozar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are lots of creepy still lifes. Like, you think still lifes are boring until they fill them with <laughs> skulls and skulking people um it's more than fruit it's, it's still canoe. life yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess they took the whole idea of still life to its most literal level really they yeah. did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we recently got the chance to check out studio headphones what did you think inez I like them. The ones I got were the Regent, which is their premium on-ear model, and they're super white and really cute, and the sound quality is great. How about you? I also got the Regent in black because it's like my soul, <laughs> and <laughs> was super impressed that they didn't feel like they were squeezing my head. And you can also plug it in, or you can use the Bluetooth on it. And one of the great things about Studio is that they provide free worldwide shipping. So What? Uh, free worldwide shipping, which is great because that means you can get their sleek, modern Scandinavian design anywhere. The best part, besides the great sound quality, the comfort factor, the fashion factor, and the Scandinavian design, is that they are offering listeners of XX Will Travel a discount of 15%. Just use the code WILLTRAVEL and get your own. And visit them at studio.com. Between those three, which one did you like the best? I like them all for different reasons. I think I could... Bruges is nice, but again, it seemed touristy. And I, I kind of... I kind of like the the cultural scene in Belgium or in Brussels and the, the cuteness of Ghent. Mm -hmm. But I would go back to Bruges because on that walking tour, I did a walking tour in Bruges too. It's kind of my thing now. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and on the walking tour, I just found a ton of stuff that I had missed because it was raining and I wasn't out and about that I would go back and see again. Oh, and the highlight of Bruges, mm -hmm. I did see a relic containing the blood of Christ. Oh, man. My parents were very jealous. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I got them a prayer card and I lit them a candle. Yeah. So, yes, they pointed on the main square in Bruges, our guide by the um, town hall, which in itself is a work of art. Our guide told us that the relic, a, pe a crusader brought back a piece of cloth with Christ's blood on it. And I was like, I'll see that. Yeah. It's free. Why not? So I went up there and it's in like a glass tube and there is a woman in full vestment sitting behind it. So you will not try and steal it or touch it or molest it <laughs> in any way. And it was super surreal to be like, okay, I don't know if this is really the blood of Christ, but like it could be. Yeah. And there's also, on the corner of the town square, there used to be a huge church. Like I said, this is super churchy. Um, this was a super churchy trip. So there used to be a cathedral on the corner of the town square, and sometime in the 15th or 16th century, it disappeared off of all the maps. And no one knew what happened to it. What? Until... The Crown Plaza Hotel started ex excavating for their Bruges location and stumbled upon the foundation and a bunch of frescoes wow. and, like, pillars and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, that's what happened to the church. And like, but did it just sink or what had happened? I have no, no idea. idea. Yeah. But, like, there's... The foundation is there. Yeah. 
And if you go up to the reception desk at the Crown Plaza in Bruges and you say, I would like to go to the basement and see the church. They're like, okay. And they point you in the right direction. That's so cool. And you can go to the basement and see the church. Yeah. And speaking of hotels, (laughs) in Ghent, the Marriott, which is like a five-star hotel in Ghent, is right on the main canal among these old buildings. And apparently, it used to be a brothel for sailors who came into port. Nice. And they know this because the symbol... The symbol for love is two swans facing each other because their heads and necks make a heart. Mm -hmm. And the international symbol for prostitution at the time was two swans facing away from each other because prostitution was bad love. Oh. So the Marriott, (laughs) like, in the building that it it renovated, maintained that um, sign. So there's a sign of two swans facing away from each other. Look at you, Marriott. I know. Being scandalous. Naughty. (laughs) So how were you able to get to all these different locations? So I flew from Perpignani Airport in Perpignan to Brussels. And that was an experience because it was Ryanair. Oh, yeah. And I had never flown that before. And I was I had an inordinate amount of fear of flying <laughs> Ryan Air. Because I'm like, I'm going to get there. They're going to be like, you have blonde hair. That's $700 extra. <laughs> uh, which would be a really smart business move in France and Brussels. <laughs> because everybody's pretty fair. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> so I got there. I flew Ryan Air because... It was thirty dollars and two less than two hours, and to take the train, I would have had to go all the way up to Paris, and it would have been like eight hours and two hundred dollars or whatever. So from there, I landed in the the airport Charlevoix, which is in the south of Brussels. It's not the main international airport, and I took a bus to Ghent, which was like an hour away. So it couldn't have been easier. Yeah. It was so easy. And once I got to Ghent, I took the trolley to my Airbnb, which was about a 20-minute walk from town. And Bruges was a day trip on the train, but that was about 40 minutes away. And then Brussels, I took the train. Yeah, and that was about an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Beautiful trains, Wi-Fi. Yeah. It was amazing. I remember calling my mom on the phone before I left, and I was like, did you know in Brussels, there's a train that leaves for Amsterdam every hour on the hour, and it's fifty dollars. <laughs> and she did not share my excitement, but I was just like, "Oh, I love public transit. I love it. It's so easy." Yeah. So and it's what I dream of of having like just not only a better train system in the U.S., but one of those like high pe- high speed train systems that just connect like Chicago to New York in six hours. Because I would totally take that instead of flying. I know. Yeah. And, like, considering we're starting from nothing. Right. Like, how easy would that be yeah. to, to build that? Yeah. Well, you know, not super easy, but right. easier sure, like, enough. lobbyists and stuff have their hand on it. So, let's talk about my favorite subject, which is beverage and food. Belgian beer. Did it live up to the hype? Belgian beer did live up to the hype. And I will say that I usually, I'm not a beer fan in the U.S. because it just makes me feel really crappy afterwards. Like really congested and bloated. And I did not feel that way after drinking Belgian beer. Is it a specific style or you just don't know? I don't know. I think it's ingredients. Oh, yeah. Back to, yeah, we were talking about this before, about how ingredients in other places just don't seem to be full of hormones. Right. So I think it's ingredients. Um, And the alcohol content is higher, like a lot higher. So maybe that just had something to do with it. Maybe I was drunk and I don't remember (laughs) being congested and bloated. Right. And the Belgium waffles. What are your tips for getting a good one? Well, I was told very wisely that you need to watch it being made because a lot of them will pre-make them. A lot of places will pre-make them and have them shipped to the restaurant or whatever. And I had a Belgian waffle, and it was fresh off the griddle, and it was covered in Nutella Mm. and speculos, which are little cookies you get with coffee in Europe. And it was so deliciously crispy on the outside and soft as a (laughs) pillow. 
on the inside and just you didn't even I was standing in the rain eating it and I was just like oh there's nothing I would change about this moment <laughs> um, you had a romantic moment in the rain with a waffle I really did <laughs> that is the perfect description yeah. <laughs> I will never leave you yeah <laughs> we will always have Belgium and you have to eat them real fast because if they are super fresh they will like we had ours on paper plates and they will stick to the plate and then you yeah have to look like a fool trying to get every last scrap off of the paper plate. Or you could just go buy yourself another waffle because they're <laughs> plentiful. And then I also had a lot of frites. Mm. And the best frites in, in Ghent were the Fritur de Canle, which is spelled K-A-A-N-L-E-I. And again, I don't know how the Belgians do it with food where they make everything so crispy on the outside and so hot and soft in the middle. So good. <laughs> and I found out the specialty of Ghent for their frites was you have beef stew, like this Flemish beef stew, and mayo on the top. Oh, man. And you look like a local. And do not order the medium if you are by yourself because <laughs> it's like... More than an American. I was like, whatever. I'm in Europe. The the portion sizes are tiny. And then she handed me like a, a cone of fries the size of a football. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can't eat these. Um, I tried. I gave yeah. it my most valiant effort. And I heard that my friend in Amsterdam warned me too when we got free. She was like, don't order medium. And I was like, oh, I've learned that lesson <laughs> already. I ate at a really great vegetarian restaurant in in Ghent called the Walrus, um, which is just like this cozy, you can tell it's a local place because I stayed kind of off the beaten path. Um, it's a cozy bar filled with locals and excellent. I had like a veg, well, it was like pescatarian, a pescatarian Belgian, Belgian stew in a, a white cream sauce, like a wine cream sauce with all these fresh vegetables and fish and endive. There are Andive <laughs> is what they're famous for, so they prepare, prepare endive in various ways. So I had that too, and they had like sweet potato frites, which were also lovely. Um, so the walrus is an excellent place for dinner too. But I just filled up mostly on bread and chocolate and cheese and beer. So I didn't have a lot of meals there, <laughs> um, like full traditional meals. And another thing I noticed about traveling I was like, why don't I travel more in Europe? Because it is expensive. Yeah. It is, like, especially if you're by yourself and you're paying for everything, it is pricey. So, yes, I I had to make some sacrifices, and I was like, if I have to live on bread and cheese <laughs> and chocolate, and I'm in Belgium, then so be it. Yeah. I mean... It sounds delightful anyway, just yeah. moving off bread and cheese and chocolate. It At was, least it's good. <laughs> it was really, really good. And everybody was like, why didn't you have mussels? Well, it turns out that mussel season begins in June. No. Oh. And these are just French mussels. And we've already discussed our feelings on France <laughs> previously in this episode. <laughs> you weren't going to betray Belgium like that. <laughs> no, but I did have oysters in France on the beach. Oh, nice. Which were... Lovely. Yeah. So so to you, what was the most surprising thing about Belgium? The most surprising thing about Belgium is that people really, they didn't poo-poo Belgium. I guess they felt neutral about Belgium because I was excited and I was trying to like pump myself up. And I was like, I'm going to Belgium. And people are like, meh. Mm -hmm. And I was like, are you serious? Unless they were craft beer snobs. Right. <laughs> Nobody was really super enthusiastic about Belgium, and I really, really loved it. I had such a great time there, just, like, walking around and seeing the history and, like, my, my pivotal Belgium moment. Everybody told me to skip Brussels, too, so I only had a day in Brussels, which I really regretted. Like, I could have spent a day or two there, because by the end of day one, you're just getting your bearings. And my pivotal, like, I love Belgium moment was was walking to the market, which is the, the city square in Brussels. And I kind of was all churched out. I was all museumed out. I had seen all these buildings that were from the 1400s. So I was like, there's nothing here that can impress me. <laughs> and I rounded a corner and 
saw this square with all these amazing, gorgeous, medieval stone buildings, and I can't even describe it, and I did not take any pictures because I was like, I need a wide-angle lens. <laughs> Nothing I do is going to, like, bring justice to this yeah. moment. And it just really, like, culminated in an, an overwhelming sense. I'm being cheesy. But it culminated in this overwhelming sense of gratitude that I, oh, so many people never get to see this stuff. And just, like, so hashtag blessed right. <laughs> uh, to be there at that moment. And it, it's just, Brussels is a beautiful city. It's international. Like, I don't know. There's tons yeah. of stuff to do. There's There's lots of good stuff. Well, I didn't really like the food scene in Brussels as much as like ghent but you know mm-hmm. i may, i was just scratching the surface so yeah what do i know yeah 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 it might be something that you needed to like a couple more days to explore fully and by that time i was kind of exhausted like i also decided that two weeks is a long time yeah to be on a trip and staying in a different city every night so by the time i got to amsterdam i was just kind of done <laughs> with everything and i was getting sick and it was cold and that might have been my, I still really like Brussels, but that might have been my hesitancy to, yeah. to get out more. Like, my hotel in Brussels had a bathtub, and I was like, bathtub! <laughs> so, like, come on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, you stayed at a hotel in Brussels and then an Airbnb in Ghent? Yes. Yeah, and, uh-huh. but you didn't stay in Bruges, or you did? I did not. No. No. Oh, okay. And then I stayed with, I stayed with friends in Perpignan, and then... In Amsterdam, I stay at three hotels. Oh, man. Um, I know, because my friends have two giant cats that I oh, right. my allergies couldn't handle. Um, so the first night, I it was expensive. Like, that's the one thing I'll say about Amsterdam is expensive. But I lucked out, and I got a five-star hotel on a hot wire called Hotel Okura. Um, and they upgraded my room. Oh, nice. <laughs> and it was, like, European five-star. Like, no, none of this American five-star <laughs> malarkey. And I walked in, and the curtains opened automatically as soon as I walked in. And all the lights came up. And there was a beautiful view of a canal and bathrobes yeah. and bath salts and a huge, like, a bathtub that, or a bathroom the size of my apartment with a huge tub and my friends have a little baby, and at the end of the first day, they were like, well, you know, we're kind of cutting out early, but... And I was like, oh, it's fine. Right. See you later. <laughs> Bad time. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other, like, hidden gems you want to share about Belgium or parting thoughts about it? Maybe tips? I think the entire country of Belgium is a hidden gem. Okay. I do. It's... Tips are, if you have mobility issues... Belgium might not be the place for you okay. because everything is cobblestones. Everything is like really narrow, windy stairs. I'm not, I never discourage anybody from avoiding a place, but just beware mm-hmm. if you go there that it's going to be, it was hard on me. Yeah. Like I would come home and probably cause I was, that's probably why I got sick cause I was going so hard, but I'd come home and like collapse into bed because it was just so exhausting to to walk that much through the city so that's a tip i really like staying in a neighborhood as opposed to like right downtown and and it's it's pretty easy because it was a 20 minute walk or a trolley ride downtown if you do go to i know in ghent i think i think all three cities get a transit pass because i think the transit passes work on the buses and the trolleys and i believe you can get them in increments of 24 48 and 72 hours and that will that'll save you some money mm-hmm. the it's like I think two euro, always keep coins. I was forever running out mm-hmm. of coins and then I'd have to take a bus and there would be no no change or no place to buy tickets and it would be two euros and I would kind of be out of luck and have to go buy my buy more chocolate to get change, <laughs> which is a horrible yeah. situation to Ooh, be in. Do. Well, thanks so much for enlightening us on Belgium. You're welcome. Yeah. My mom actually always said that it was one of her favorite places in Europe, that it was really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is it's a fairy tale. And I've never been... I hear the same about Prague. Yeah. I hear the same about Germany and the castles. I hear the same about France. But this was, for me, the first time that I'd ever been in that region and kind of been like, whoa, my gosh, everybody was right. It is like a fairy tale right. kind of thing. <laughs> Cool. Well, if you like this episode and want to hear more, subscribe on iTunes. You can also find us on Podbean and Stitcher and other 
Podbean like locations. Podcatchers. Podcatchers, <laughs> exactly. We also have a Facebook group, which is the XX Will Travel Podcast, Podcast Women's Travel, Travel Community. community. Yes. Long title, but I'm sure if you just put XX Will Travel Group, something will come up. (laughs) And as always, you can find, you can also like our page on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at XX Will Travel or go to our website, XXWillTravel.com. Until then, go forth and travel.